Thank you, Mike. Our scripture this morning is from 2 Corinthians 4, verses 7 through 10. It's Paul writing, talking about he and others with him who have been going from town to town to town to share the gospel, sometimes with good results, but this passage describes a lot of what has not been so good. So Paul writes, but we have this treasure of the gospel in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. The message this morning is entitled, if you've noticed in your bulletin, Persecuted but Not Abandoned. And we are preparing to begin a six-week series entitled, Not a Fan, focused on small groups and themed sermons. And so I've had my spiritual radar on alert for stories, testimonies that will open our hearts, give us a sense of what it means to answer the call of Jesus, to follow him not just stand on the sidelines as Jesus fans waving our John 3.16 placards, cheering him on as he scores the winning touchdown by taking five loaves and two fish and turning them into a Super Bowl feast of way over 5,000. So this morning I would like to share the testimony of a man whose real name cannot be told, nor his village in the country of Mali in Africa, because it's not safe. But in the midst of his powerful witness, I would ask you to notice the number of times that he uses the word follower. My village is far away from anything that be, could be called a city. You can't find it on a map, even in Mali. Most people have never heard of it, which is why it's so incredible that God found me here. A pioneer missionary from the group Every Home for Christ, named Denise, made the long trek to where I live. Steadily, home by home, I watched him from my hut as he shared the good news with every family in our village. I didn't know what he was up to and was suspicious at first, but his kind eyes told me something different. They had a love in them that I had never seen. My people believe in cruel spirits who care nothing for us. They require our goat and chicken sacrifices, and our children die of disease. But these dark spirits never give, and they're never satisfied. When Anise arrived... Most people in our village have never heard the name of Jesus before. I myself am 39 years old and much of my life is already behind me. 
Before Anise visited me, I didn't think it was possible to change the kind of man I was. I'd done so much wrong. My life was so heavy. When Anise finally headed toward my home, I waited with anticipation for him on my porch. He warmly greeted me and asked how he could pray for my family and me. He let me know that he had already been praying for our village and he just came to serve us. After he prayed for me, I felt a deep peace I had never known. After he shared with me about Jesus, that I have a father who loves me so much, he sent his son Jesus to earth to die in my place so I can be with him forever in heaven. He told me that God loves me deeply and that I could call on his name and be saved forever. I can't tell you the joy that filled my heart as a niece shared with me. I knew I wanted the love of God and the peace I felt when he prayed So immediately, I decided to follow Jesus. I am a new person. Shortly after, my wife began to see the change that God had worked in my life. And when I shared the gospel with her, she also decided to follow Jesus. She wanted to come home, too, to our Heavenly Father. I had to tell others. I began visiting homes of friends and neighbors, telling them what Jesus had done in my life. Some responded with joy, but many cast me out of their homes. The more I shared God's love, the more some people hated me. I endured severe persecution and hostility from my own people. Again and again, they have tried to silence me with threats. But I will not be silenced. Even when I suffer cruelty, God always strengthens me to continue as I share in the sufferings of Christ. Anise has also returned many times to encourage me in my faith. Recently, he appointed me as leader of my village Christ group. Every week now, I gather with new believers in my village to study the Bible and to worship God. Many more new believers have joined us, and we are planning to start reaching out to the villages around us with this gospel of Jesus Christ. I know that the coming days will probably bring more persecution and hardship, but the gospel must be shared no matter the cost. There are eternal lives at stake, so our temporary hardships don't compare. I can't tell you my real name or Anise's real name or the name of my village because it's just not safe. But I can ask you to pray for us. The God who knows your name knows mine as well. He knew how to find me and rescue me and he will do the same for countless more Please pray for God to add many to our fellowship and that my whole family and village would be saved. And this was written this past October. So we're called to pray for this man and his village and what the Holy Spirit is doing there. What a mighty witness. Do you think this man is just a fan? Or is he a true follower of Christ? Not just sitting on the sideline, but in the action.
following his Lord, being obedient, out on the front line. Next Sunday will be our first official, not a fan, message. And the small groups will be starting the next day on the 9th. So I encourage you, if you've not signed up, do so. Oh, you will be so blessed. Daytimes, evenings, many days of the week. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for all of you. Our hymn of prayer this morning is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. And I thought of this hymn as I was reading this man's story and he's watching as people move by. Watching this man go from door to door. And I'm thinking, he's saying, don't pass me by. Stop at my house too. So would you all now rise Number 351, as we sing, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. <laughs>